it's fine if people want to stay good friends with their first love and they want to comment on each other's posts, but I won't be dating either of you. Hi, welcome back to Friend Crush. I'm your host, Amber Akilla. This is my video series slash podcast where I talk about stuff and things, cute, chaotic, and critical thinking. If you are watching this on Spotify, I recommend you subscribe to my YouTube because I probably won't be updating the Spotify or like the podcast audio anymore. So it's going to be on YouTube. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to have regular updates on content. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm in Beijing going back to Shanghai today and I'm gonna film... oh my god my skin is looking real crazy. I want to do a quick kind of like Q&A video with just some questions that I've recently received while I get ready to check out. So I'm gonna be talking about university, my experience with the university, celibacy versus incels, dating someone who's friends with their first love or their ex, and oh, breaking up with a guy friend that you've hooked up with. <laughs> okay, also, obviously this is like my opinion, and I am not saying that you have to do what I say and that my opinion is superior to other people's. I'm just here to provide you an alternative or an additional perspective so that you can decide what's right for you because what I want in my life or what is compatible for me might not be compatible for you and I really believe that it's not about finding someone that you agree on everything with it's just about expanding your worldview and then being able to better like focus in on what it is that you really want for yourself rather than assuming that there's going to be someone out there that's going to tell you exactly what you need to hear like for me and how I've had to like figure out who I am it's like a research project you know I'm looking at all different sources seeing what different people's approaches and opinions are about certain things and then coming to my own conclusion in terms of what is going to be right for me <clears throat> at any given stage in my life so something that worked for me maybe when I was younger isn't necessarily going to work for me now and what works for me now might not work for me when I'm older and I think for me I really value being able to be adaptable and change and grow and evolve and leave behind who I was and enter a new era a new chapter and it doesn't have to be something that's like superficial it's not necessarily that something that people can see on a surface level it's more about my relationship with myself and my relationship with my past self present self, future self, and then the relationships I have with the people around me by extension. Caveat, okay? So don't think that I'm telling you what to do, even if sometimes I use very firm language. <laughs> it's because I'm talking to myself. So first question that I got was, what are your thoughts on dating your best friend's brother with your friend's consent? I think if you and your best friend's brother really like each other, and you have your friend's consent, then go for it. I mean, as long as you are going into things with an open mind and open heart, I think you just have to let life take you <laughs> where it wants to take you. And if the, the attraction is really strong between you and your friend's brother, and there's also like mutual respect there, not just like a physical desire, then I think you should go for it. I think if you just want to hook up with your friend's brother, maybe that would be not as advisable because you can actually just hook up with anyone. But if you really want to like pursue a relationship with someone, why not? You never know. Next question. How do you release your fear associated with stopping people pleasing? So my last video was on people pleasing. And when I have like a moment where I'm wondering like, what kind of decision I want to make and if I'm regressing, temporarily regressing into a people pleasing state, I ask myself like why do you have to suffer in order for other people to benefit? That's what I ask myself. Why should it be me that has to take an L so that everybody else can have a good time? It should be 
we all get to have a good time together. It's like, of course, I've mentioned that there are times when you will make a sacrifice and you will make a compromise, but that's different to living in a constant state of prioritizing other people's needs over your own. And I think that if I had to choose between protecting myself and disappointing someone, and disappointing someone is different to disrespecting someone, okay? But there are people out there who will manipulate you into thinking that the disappointment that they experience because you have chosen to do something in service of yourself rather than give up part of yourself for a situation or a relationship, they will act like you've disrespected them. But you haven't, okay? You've disappointed them. They can't take it with grace. That's their problem. So I always ask myself, like, why do I have to take an L in this situation? And is it going to be worth it for me to do that long term? Is it in line with my own personal long term goals? And again, it's also not about like, me over this person. It's like, you have your thing, I have my thing. There's no reason why they need to become intertwined and I have to take an L or you have to take an L. Like when you're dealing with like people pleasing dynamics, it's usually like a personal relationship or like a work relationship or something. So think about what's at stake when you are getting paid. It's a different thing. <laughs> you have obligations, contract for requirements, and you need to think about like the direction that you want your career to go in or your work to go in. But when it comes to personal relationships, it's like you want to be around people who, who give you the space to have your needs met and you to be able to do that for them too. And you can only experience that with other people when you do it for yourself, when you maintain your boundaries. You can't expect other people to know exactly what it is that you want. So you need to take that time, process the emotions that you have around whatever decision you're making, and then make a decision rather than telling people, you know, like you have to take action and say, no, I'm not going to be able to do this. And then you don't do it. Or yes, I can do this, but I can't do that. You need to have like congruence and integrity between what you say and what you do. Easier said than done and not like it's going to be a perfect process. But being able to process that and communicate it. And I think that when you do it for yourself, your outer world will re reflect back to you. Okay, so the people that are already in your life, they will either allow for you to have that space to have your needs met and, and you extend it to them and then your relationship takes on a new form or you realize that there are people around you that will not hold that space for you and then you have to decide whether you still want them in your life and to what degree. It's not like you're able to hold onto your boundaries and then suddenly everyone around you is going to be able to do that. Some people will, some people won't. The people that won't you need to take responsibility for deciding how much of their presence you want in your life and then if they're not compatible with you anymore that creates space for new people that are going to enter your life and that you can mutually slay together by honoring each other's needs and boundaries and it doesn't have to be personal or well, most of the time everyone is just in a different place in life and the direction that someone is going in isn't always going to be compatible with you and I really do think that you know, like in some ways we do have a life path or we are here individually to experience different things. And sometimes what you're here to experience is not compatible with someone that you've had a previous experience with. And that's okay. You know, it's not easy. Of course, it's still painful to let go of people that you love, people that you care about, maybe people that really care about you. That is just life. I'm sorry. I've thought and I've searched for answers and I've wondered and I've questioned. Sometimes you just haven't been alive long enough to meet the people that, that are really going to have a deep impact on you. Sometimes you just haven't been alive long enough to have an experience that is really going to like change the course of your life. And that's why I stay alive, just to see what's gonna happen, you know? Like I say, I didn't ask to be born. Not like I wanna die, but if I'm alive, I'm going to see what's going to happen. I want to see what is possible. Being sad and angry and fearful all the time, it's like the only person that loses is you. Situations don't get better just because you feel bad about them if you're not doing anything about it. So that's why I think when you learn to start honouring yourself and creating that space for yourself by acting on what's important to you, making those tough decisions, that's when you see your life really change and then that's how you see the world around you change as well be the change you want to see in the world and I think that really does start with learning how to have boundaries like it doesn't seem connected but it is connected okay
to hear your experience and tips on becoming a content creator. I think you just have to do it. I just enjoy doing it. And I think the difficult thing for me is always being consistent because I just kind of have maybe like a bit of a chaotic time management approach. So I try to be as consistent as I can but at the same time like I don't need content creating to be like a full-time job for me so I also take breaks and you know give myself time off don't force myself when it doesn't feel natural to be in front of the camera or whatever or to post and yeah I think you just have to be consistent if you want to like build an audience I guess but honestly I'm just like here to have a good time I really appreciate the people that tune in to the stuff that I make and the things that I do in my little corner of the internet. But yeah, I mean, I only have 500 subscribers on YouTube at the moment. <laughs> Who knows what will happen? Just have fun with it, you know, and try to make content that you want to see rather than making content that you think people want to see. I mean, find a balance between those two things. I actually don't understand how my algorithms work when it comes to what I make being pushed or not pushed, especially on TikTok because I feel like the videos that I've made that have done really well are always the videos that I least expect to get any traction and I'm usually like not wearing any makeup and just like spitting off the dome. <laughs> and then when I've put in a lot of effort to cut something that I think makes sense and that I've spent a lot of time agonizing over, it doesn't get any engagement. So. That's why I just try to have fun with it. You never know what's going to happen. And I think if you just try to be consistent, then you'll be able to see different trends in like what does and doesn't work for you. If you don't do it, you'll just never know. So only because I've made so many like TikToks, am I aware that, you know, sometimes you have a hit and then usually you have like a bunch of flops in between. But at the same time, like when people, even the videos that have low engagement, there are still people who are commenting on the way that it might help them or it's given them some kind of perspective. So it doesn't mean that those videos with like less views are less valuable just because they have less views. Like that's kind of out of your control a lot of the time. Um, and yeah, I think just like adapting and trying new approaches and living your life. Just have fun. I don't think everybody needs to be a full-time content creator, you know? It's very hard to do it full-time. <laughs> and you really have to be built different, in my opinion. I just don't know if I'm built that way. I still enjoy making things and connecting with people and being slightly insane. It's great. I learn a lot about myself and, you know the world and connection and humans as a result of doing this I'm very grateful okay what are your thoughts on celibacy and incels I've thought about it and concluded an incel wants to have sex but no one wants to have sex with them more often than not due to their disrespectful behavior which increases with each rejection the vicious cycle begins whereas temporarily celibate people could have had sex but choose not to various reasons like inner healing no attraction, focus on other things in life, but generally they don't blame other people for their celibacy because they made the choice not to have sex for whatever time. Yes, this is true, I agree. I think that people of any gender are able to get into a mindset where they, essentially it's like a victim mindset. It's everybody else's fault that you are not getting what you want and there's no reason why you should have to change your approach um, and consider how you are the common denominator in your experience. And instead you just like project outward and say, well, it's men's fault that they are like this. It's women's fault that they are like this and I'm not getting this. It's a really dangerous mindset to get in. And if you are in a victim mindset, it takes time to, oh my God, my leg's dead. It takes time to heal from that. You know, I think that it's sad that for male incels in particular, I'm sure that they have experienced trauma at the hands of women in their life. I think, you know, there are a lot of ways in which mothers can unknowingly create like an unhealthy kind of attachment style between them and their son and then the way that, that their son is like, goes into the world and how that affects their relationship with women. 
similarly to like the role that a father should play in a in a man's life or like a father figure and then also obviously like the society that we live in and just the way that women are treated by men and then how women may inadvertently punish men around them or whatever like it's much more complicated than just like men are to blame right and I think there is a very big difference between misogyny and misandry as I talk about like in other videos and stuff as disgusted as I am by like the incel community I do understand to a degree like where it comes from like the origins of it and it is obviously rooted in patriarchy and misogyny and I just think it's really sad that there aren't enough safe spaces for men to build community and express like their own frustrations emotional frustrations spiritual frustrations um, in healthy ways and unfortunately it's not the responsibility of women to do that you know women know how to do that very well that's why women have progressed so much as a collective in terms of how we think and our values and our ability to develop self-worth and our ability to like have standards and it's because women are able to do that and it's because we've kind of had no choice you know under the circumstances like you need to come together and have a support system and I think for men because this there's this like double-edged sword with, with privilege comes a level of ignorance and like a number of blind spots that prevent you from being able to consider parts of yourself that you might have just been repressing or ignoring from a very young age that you've been conditioned to do so you know so I think that for the incel community yeah of course they do want to connect with women they do want to have physical intimacy with women they feel somewhat entitled to it but they are not willing to consider the ways in which they could contribute to having healthier relationships with women but that's not women's fault you know and it's different when women say that they hate men or that they are done with men because you're not at a shortage of attention from men you're over having to manage like the entitlement that men have towards you so it's like you would like it if it was possible to have a respectful relationship with a man but it doesn't mean that you feel you don't even really feel entitled to it you're just like I don't respect you I don't want you around me in sales it's like I don't respect you but I feel entitled to your body I feel entitled to your empathy even though I have absolutely no empathy towards you I think a lot of women extend a lot of empathy to the men that they love and the men that they love are not able to hold that space for themselves and therefore not able to hold it for the women that they probably really want to connect with but it's like dude she can't meet you at your end of the street I think healthy relationships of any kind you're meeting in the middle and when you have men that are entitled to a woman's time and body they expect women to come all the way over here and now women are like, why would I need to move from this position? I have my own bank account, my own job, my own life. It's a risk for me to come across here. You don't understand how it's important to meet here. I'm not coming over to meet you. But for women that are, that are done with men, they're usually well aware of how they can get to this middle point. But the man is still like, come here, come here, come here, come here. And she's like, goodbye, no thank you. Or they're able to meet here he's able to meet here and then she's constantly trying to fill this gap or he's like pulling her over you know not all cases just generally speaking of course toxic women exist too I have been a toxic woman at times in my life it is what it is but self-awareness is key so temporarily celibate is different because it's like yeah maybe for whatever reason you have decided that you need to heal certain parts of yourself and like being physically intimate with other people stands in the way of that yeah focused on other things in life no longer centering romance you're not blaming other people for that choice it is a choice that you've made you haven't been forced to not have sex with people it's not like you know if you're not on the incel pipeline you probably know that if you wanted to you could <laughs> It just doesn't bring you fulfillment so you're not participating in it and I think that there's a time and place for everything you know like in some stages of my life I've been more open to physical intimacy and then other stages of my life I haven't both have informed who I am as a person and how I approach relationships and for me I think that hookup culture especially for women and men is like just not as empowering or as fulfilling 
as people want to make it seem like it is. I think in the West, if you're critical of hookup culture, it's like, oh, well, people should be able to do whatever they want with their bodies and blah, 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 and like, this is purity culture. But it's not like one or the other. Like, hookup culture will always be there because people will always be horny. But it's just like, to what degree do you participate in hookup culture? Do you need to live in a state of hookup culture? I don't think so. Hookup culture is good for exploring your sexuality and then I think that being celibate by choice for periods of time is great for learning how to honor your body and treat it with respect because it's very easy to lower your standards when you're participating in hookup culture. If you want to live like a wholesome holistic life you want to be able to be mindful of what you're putting in your body how much water you drink what food you eat and i think that should also extend to the people that you're physically intimate with the people that get to see you naked <laughs> so taking time to be temporarily celibate by choice is of course different to being an incel which is an involuntary involuntary celibate and it's crazy because like it actually started from a woman who was talking about how she didn't want to have sex with men anymore and then men somehow co-opted it and turned it into this like really fucked up community that's like a threat to society. Next question. The guy I'm currently seeing is talking to his ex and they're very good friends. Apparently she's his first love. He claims that there's nothing going on, but I'm afraid there's still that emotional connection. They still comment on each other's posts. They broke up during COVID and they live in different countries now. Thoughts? I personally am not about this, okay? It's fine if people want to stay good friends with their first love and they want to comment on each other's posts, but I won't be dating either of you. Sorry, I'm just not interested in people who haven't let go of previous romantic partners, you know? I think it's fine to be on good terms with your ex and you know, maybe you speak occasionally, maybe there's no bad blood between you, but you don't want, I don't want any of my exes in my inner circle, okay? I think like, you know, think about the five people that you spend the most time with that you're closest with. My ex is not gonna be one of those five people. They might be like over here in my extended social circle or like I might talk to them like once a year or I might, you know, be nice to them if I see them. Luckily, I don't bump into my exes very often because we all live in different places. But I don't want them in my inner circle. And I don't want to date someone who has an ex in their inner circle, especially their first love. That to me is like, have loose ends that haven't been tied up. I don't want to be a part of that, okay? You know, I've also had people who have tried to keep me as someone in their inner circle while they date other people after we've dated. I don't want to do that, okay? Because I respect women and I don't want a woman who I might not even be close with but is dating someone that I've dated to... I don't want to have beef with her, okay? I don't know her. I might not even like her, but I just think that it's unfair. I don't want to be put in a position where I'm dating someone and I'm worried about another woman being a third party. I'm not going to do that to other women. So for me... I don't love this. Especially they broke up during COVID, so I'm sure they have like a whole narrative about like, oh, you know, the circumstances didn't work out, but one day we'll reunite, we'll be back together. It's not working out. That's just, that's bullshit. Okay, I just, no. Commenting on each other's posts, lame. <laughs> you know, I think it's fine. Fine to be on good terms with an ex. But for me, being on the inner circle, it's like, don't you have other friends? get other friends. Why doesn't your ex have other friends? Like for me, I think it's fine to still be in a place with your ex where you still speak and there's unfinished business, but I don't think it's fair to date another person if you're not actually over them. I think that's weird. You, you, it, it's not for me, okay? But some people might enjoy this triangulation situation, not me. <laughs> I recently moved to New York City and don't really know anyone my age, 24. I'm not in school and I work remotely. Been wondering what your tips are on how to put myself out there more and to create new friendships slash build community. Okay, so in my how to make friends as an adult video, I talk about how 
I have a one plus one equals three approach to life. It's not like, okay, I'm going to do this and then this is going to happen and then this, this is going to be the outcome. It's like, I'm going to do a bunch of things and live my best life to the best of my ability and then maintain space for the unknown. You know, there are so many things that are outside of our control. Think about how tiny, how tiny you are in like the broad spectrum of humanity. Okay. The world is a very big place. Imagine it like a beach, sand on a beach and everyone is a little grain of sand. Okay. I am an insignificant little pea (laughs) in the scheme of things. So I actually have very little control and very little ability to predict what is going to happen. And I think when it comes to meeting people that you connect with, it's like, if I, you know, am trying to maintain my sense of self, remain centered, remain open hearted, open minded, then I can't predict who will enter my life and who I may or may not connect with, who may re-enter my life, who may leave my life. And I think as I've gotten older and I've had so many different experiences with friendships, positive, negative, fulfilling, heartbreaking, even in romantic relationships too, it's like you just never know what's going to happen. And I could never tell you how I was going to meet someone that I became very close with or how my relationship with someone was going to fall apart. And I think just if you aren't in school and you work remotely, going out, doing activities, participating in like hobbies that you might enjoy, just like doing things that bring you joy, you will meet people along the way. And sometimes it's like you meet someone who introduces you to someone else who you become close with. You know, you think it's going to be this person that you met, but then that connection opens you up to a whole bunch of other connections. So focusing on yourself always, doing the things that bring you joy and just having an open mind and an open heart and then also just being discerning with how you feel around new connections and stuff. Like for me, moving back to Shanghai, in 2022 was so overwhelming because there was people that I knew two years prior to returning, you know, people that I wasn't that close with have reached out to me and we've become much closer than when I was in Shanghai. People that I was really close with, I'm not so close with anymore. New people that I've met, I've become close with. I literally could not have told you like in May, 2022, when I was preparing to come back to Shanghai, how those things were going to play out. That's why it was so overwhelming. So I was like, "Ah, what's happening? But, you know, I'm so grateful for the relationships that I have that feel really fulfilling and exciting and we get to have a good time and we're supportive. And I'm also grateful for the friendships that I did have that maybe, you know, have taken on a different form as well. So yeah, I know that that's not like, if you just do this, then this will happen. But I just don't think that life is actually like that. And I think it's so much more exciting and rewarding and fulfilling when you are open to things just happening. You know, like we've all had moments where we just experience like synchronicities, things that you could never have predicted, but are somehow like just feel really right at the same time. And sometimes things that feel really right in the moment they're not going to be right forever. Okay. It's not going to be compatible forever. And just being able to appreciate like both sides of the experience, you know, how I like to live my life. There is a guy who I feel keeps disrespecting my time by making plans, but not following through. And then saying he fell asleep or didn't see my text confirming or had to take his mom somewhere last minute, blah, blah, blah. I'm done with him on a romantic level, but we were cool before wondering if we, if I should communicate this to him or just leave him be. It's been a week since I've texted him back already. So I kind of feel bad, but at this point it's clear we aren't compatible and his behavior hasn't changed. Even after I've communicated how I feel about when he doesn't show up. Anyway, I guess my question is, do you recommend just leaving him be and not responding to him or tell him I'm good. I'm off him. (laughs) I think it sounds like you're done and you just want to give this person another chance to redeem themselves. If you think that it's clear that you're not compatible and that his behavior hasn't changed, then that's just who he is. If you want him in your life, he's always going to be like this. He's not going to turn around and be like, wow, suddenly I'm a new person and I'm going to be really great at communication and I'm going to make sure that I follow through on my word. Maybe he becomes that person one day, but it's not your job to wait around and find out if that's what you want now. Like you need to accept the people in your life, regardless of whether it's a friend regardless of whether it's romantic, as they are now. They can change, but you have no control over how they're going to change. So I think that if you can't accept him as he is now, then it's easier to just walk away. 
maybe he becomes the person that you want him to be, but no guarantee of that. And what's the point of waiting and seeing? I don't think he's going to appreciate you more just because you hung around for him to become a better person. If anything, when people become different versions of themselves, they want new people around them. It sucks when there's someone who you were on good terms with before you started being romantically involved. You don't longer feel like you're on those terms anymore, but it happens. And I've definitely been in situations where I'm like, oh, I don't want to lose this guy as a friend. And then they don't treat me like someone, they treat me like someone that is worth losing to them. So then I'm like, well, bye. Guess we're not friends. I, this is why I think it's so important to have, you know, healthy platonic friendships around you so that you understand what it means to be treated with respect separate to just romantic attraction. Now that you don't have romantic attraction with this person, they don't treat you with respect anymore. Why do you want to be friends with them? I have friends that treat me with respect. If a guy that I'm dating doesn't treat me with respect, I'm like, why would I want you in my life? You are technically auditioning or coming into my inner circle. And if you can't meet the standards of what it takes to be in the inner circle, don't be in it. And it doesn't mean that it's not hard when you might have feelings for someone, when you might be attracted to someone. But my relationship with myself and my relationship with my life in general is more important than my relationship with someone who doesn't respect me, who doesn't follow through. And it's not fair, but it's just how it is. And whoever this person is, like the guy, there are probably other people in his life that accept him for who he is and tolerate that behavior. Everybody has different standards, everybody has different preferences, everybody has different levels of tolerance for different types of behavior. Your inability to tolerate someone's behavior, you don't have to feel bad about that because they'll find people that are at his level, you know? The spectrum of the human experience is very wide. Incels have found each other, that's like very bottom of the barrel shit. So this guy, you don't need to feel a type of way about him you know, not being in his life anymore. It sucks because you know, like his life would probably be, be better if you were in it, but that's something that he's gonna have to discover on his own in your absence. <laughs> I'm a law student in Australia and was wondering if you could dedicate a little bit of time whenever possible to talk about your experience undertaking the degree and your decision not to go into the legal career. Thank you so much for your thought provoking episodes. So I think that even though I didn't pursue a career in law, I'm very grateful for the education that I've had because I recognize that it is such a privilege to get an education, to have had the space and time to spend on just like learning, even though I don't feel like I learned that much about the law specifically in detail. That was a period of my life where I was extremely depressed and I learned a lot about myself and I also learned a lot about like writing and editing and that kind of thing. I also learned that for me personally, I probably wouldn't make a great lawyer. It's just not for me. <laughs> and it's unfortunate that it was very expensive thing for me to learn, very expensive lesson. And I re recognize a privilege again. For me, like I don't regret it, but also because I don't feel like I have a choice. You know, I, I don't, it doesn't make sense for me to look back and be like, oh, I wish I got this other degree instead and then my life now would be different. Like my life is the way that it is because of the things that I have or haven't done in the past. And I think when you have radical acceptance for that, you can live like in the present moment much better. And I definitely had periods of my life where I really didn't understand why I was doing my degree, why I even like whether I should have even have done it, but now I'm kind of like at peace with it. I think for me also, because I didn't want to live in Australia, <laughs> at least for a period of my life, having a degree helps you a lot logistically. When you go overseas, when you need to apply for visas and work permits, having a bachelor degree is usually like the minimum requirement for education. And of course you can still get into work experience and have that on your resume and use that. For me and my personal life path, it was going to law school and not becoming a lawyer. I think that different people are built different. You know, there are some people who go through law school and it's like they were born to be a lawyer. They thrive in those environments or they're extremely good at committing to that role. And it was just very obvious when I was at law school 
that I was not one of those people. I consider myself extremely lucky that I was able to recognize that and then also not be pressured to pursue something that was like fundamentally incompatible with my personality and who I am. The stories that I admire the most in terms of like other people's career trajectory are people who have done all different things in their life. You know, maybe they studied law, then they became a designer. Maybe they studied engineering and they became a musician. Maybe they studied finance and they became an artist. Maybe they studied art and then later on in life worked in the corporate world. It, I think for me, in order to have like a fulfilling and interesting life, you need to do like different things at different stages. And you would be surprised at the way that all of these things interconnect. You know, like even though I work in the creative industry, it's still important for me to have like an understanding of how to negotiate and how to communicate. And those are things that I learned in my law degree. It's not for me to say like you should finish your degree, you shouldn't finish your degree. Personally, I think if you have the privilege of access to education, it's worth finishing, even though, oh, it is just a piece of paper. If you're already like three years deep into a four year degree, just finish it. I think if you didn't pursue university and you have been able to have really amazing work opportunities, there's no reason why you have to go back and study if you already know what you're doing, right? You know, I didn't have like a clear path or a clear alternative to law. And I think that because like I really wanted to do creative work, my mom told me, she was like, you are a creative person, so you will always be able to have creative ideas. And you can always go to art school later if you want to, but it's amazing that you even got into law school. It's a privilege to get an education and that is a degree that not everybody can get. So you may as well finish it, you know, and she encouraged me to finish it against my will. And I'm glad that she did because I wouldn't have pushed myself that hard to finish it without my mom telling me that I should. And I'm glad that she isn't like a typical tiger mom and said that, well, now I have to be a, law a lawyer too because I might not be alive today if that was the case. I consider myself very lucky to have been able to get an education like that, uh, even though the whole like six years was a blur. <laughs> it is what it is, you know? It's made me who I am today. I'm not that mad about it. Yeah, I think when you're at university studying a particular course, you can feel limited to just work opportunities within that field right but I have friends who like studied law and now they work in marketing or friends that studied law and then they work for the government opportunities are more about like connections and relationships not just about what's on your resume because you never know who you're going to meet and you never know who what kind of opportunities they can offer you so I think that having a degree is great and just keeping an open mind again to like the direction that your life may take. So it's not as simple as like, you should get a degree, you shouldn't get a degree. You will pursue what you do at university. You won't pursue what you do at university. Everybody is gonna be different. Personally, if you are already at university and you're not sure what you would do instead, you may as well finish the degree. And the only thing that I would do differently looking back is I would spend more time doing things that interest me outside of university. because. I think I lost a lot of my creative spark when I was at uni because I was just so depressed and I didn't know the purpose of me being there. And I was lucky that I was able to DJ and do that on the side so that when I did graduate, I had like a skill that was not my degree, not in my field that I could build on and that could um, provide me with other opportunities separate to the thing that I studied. So if I could have done more of that, I would. And I would encourage people to do that if they're at university, not sure what they want to do, but they still need to finish their degree or still want to finish their degree. Do other things on the side. And yeah, if you're not like a super high achiever, don't worry about having to get really high marks. Like C's get degrees, you know? I don't remember what I got for anything when I was at uni. I remember what the marks that I got when I was in high school. I don't remember the marks that I got when I was at university. That's my opinion on education. I think it is such a privilege to have access to education to get an education because I've worked in all different sorts of fields and communication is so important and that is really something that you can learn to do at university. I can tell when someone hasn't been taught how to communicate clearly and it affects your ability to do your job and it affects your relationships and I think that communication is a skill that you can hone at university when you're like learning to write, learning to research. That's really important. Obviously you can learn to do that without university, but I think some people would never even think to learn to do that if they weren't forced to in some ways. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. I'm gonna leave this episode here today. 
thank you so much for watching. I need to check out of my hotel. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, subscribe, like, comment. You can also follow my Spotify and SoundCloud for music and mixes. And send me questions, send me feedback, comment, send me a DM. You can use the paid link if you have like a pressing issue and you need a little written pep talk. I really enjoy writing those. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Drink lots of water. Tell your friends and family that you love them. Go be a better person. Love you. Speak soon.